Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov on Friday rejected a report on regular contact between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Elon Musk, the owner of Tesla, X and SpaceX, dismissing it as untrue and absolutely false information. He told reporters during his regular conference call that Putin spoke to Musk only once, before 2022, in what was a medium-length phone conversation. The conversation was more of an introductory nature and the two talked about visionary technologies, technological solutions for the future. That was actually the only contact. After that, Musk had no contacts with Putin, Peskov said and blamed the Wall Street Journal report on the election race in the US that has become extremely fierce. The election race has entered its home stretch, and of course the opponents stop at nothing. Remember that a week ago they were saying that Putin allegedly talks to Trump all day long how he allegedly talks to Musk all the time. It's all untrue, Peskov said that there were also similar claims about Donald Trump and Putin having regular contact. It's all untrue, Peskov added. Peskov was also asked about resuming a grain deal proposed by Turkey, according to Putin. He answered that there is an unofficial draft document that's currently being reviewed. The Black Sea Grain Initiative, brokered by the UN and Turkey, allowed 32.9 million metric tons of food to be exported from Ukraine, more than half to developing countries, according to the Joint Coordination Center in Istanbul. In 2023, Russia suspended an agreement that allowed Ukraine to export the produce safely through the Black Sea. Предвыборная гонка вышла на финишную стадию, и, конечно, оппоненты не гнушаются ничем. Вы помните, что недели ранее рассказывали, как Путин целыми днями якобы беседует с Трампом, теперь якобы он все время беседует с Маском, но это все неправда. Абсолютно ложная информация опубликована в газете Wall Street Journal. Действительно, у Путина был один контакт с Маском. Это было до 22 -го года. Разговор скорее носил такой ознакомительный характер. И говорили о таких более визионерских технологиях, технологических решениях для будущего. Сравнивались направления технологического развития, которое считает Маск перспективными. Путин рассказывал как у нас идет. Это был такой средний по продолжительности телефонный разговор. Это был единственный контакт. Такой неофициальный проект документа относительно возможного обсуждения, повторения такой попытки в перспективе был передан турецкой стороной. Сейчас этот документ изучается нашими соответствующими ведомствами и специалистами. Президенту будет докладываться позиция на этот счет. The Israeli Defense Forces IDF, have showcased fighter jets that were used to carry out strikes on Iran's missile facilities last night. 
The video and photos released by the IDF show F-15 and F-16 fighter jets heading out to launch the attack in Iran. The images also show Israeli Air Force Squadron's four female navigators who participated in the attack. The aircraft safely returned to Israel after successful completion of the operation, IDF stated. Israeli Defense Forces reported on Saturday that it carried out successful airstrikes on multiple military targets in Iran, specifically targeting missile manufacturing facilities. Dozens of aircraft, including fighter jets, refuelers, and spy planes, participated in Israel's strikes some 1,600 kilometers from the country, the Israeli military said. An attack on an Iranian police convoy Saturday in the country's restive southern province of Sistan and Balakestan killed at least 10 officers, authorities said. Details remain scarce over the attack in Goharku, some 1,200 kilometers southeast of the Iranian capital, Tehran. Initially, reports simply described an attack by miscreants without more information. But shortly after, Iranian state media said 10 officers had been killed. Halvash, an advocacy group for the Baluk people of Afghanistan, Iran and Pakistan, posted photos and video of what appeared to be a disabled truck painted with the green stripe used by Iranian police vehicles. One graphic photo shared by the group showed what appeared to be the corpses of two police officers in the front seat of the truck. Halvash said the attack appeared to target two security force vehicles and all those riding in them were killed. The truck appeared to have only damage from bullets, rather than any explosive being used. The state-run Erna News Agency said that Iskander Momani, the country's interior minister, ordered an investigation into the incident that it described as causing the martyrdom of a number of police. Authorities identified no immediate suspects for the attack, nor did any group claim responsibility. The assault came after Israel launched a major attack across Iran early Saturday morning. The Baluk regions across the three nations have faced a low-level insurgency by Baluk nationalists for more than two decades. Verifying information remains difficult in Iran Sistan and Baluchistan, which for decades has been home to violence involving heroin traffickers. The province is one of the least developed parts of Iran. Relations between the predominantly Sunni Muslim residents of the region and Iran's Shiite theocracy have long been strained. Typical attacks involve hit-and-run assaults by militants in the region, like the Sunni militant group Jayish al-ADL, that kill a few security officials at a time. However, there have been mass casualty attacks by militants in the past. In April, Gunmen wearing explosive vests attacked several sites in the province, killing 10 before security forces gunned down 18 militants. Last December, another assault killed 11 and wounded 8 others. Meanwhile, the Taliban said they are investigating reports that Afghan migrants had been killed by Iranian security forces in the region earlier in October, an incident that threatened to further strain relations between the nations.